In this video, we will learn what is Edge Impulse, how to train our model for object detection in it, and in the end, we'll be making our first ever ML project of detecting object using ESP32 CAM board with its code written in Arduino IDE. So hello everyone, this is Sachin Sony and you are watching the series of ML based projects and tutorials based on Edge Impulse where we are starting from very basics about how to use the platform and we'll also cover some advanced level of ML projects as well. So make sure you like this video and comment below this video right now about what you want to learn next in ML and I will definitely put it in our upcoming video of the series. And with that being said, let's start the first episode and let's discuss a bit about Edge Impulse. So we all know about machine learning. It's a process of providing data to the machine and based upon that data, the machine later predicts the things which are not explicitly programmed in it. And all this requires high computational power. So previously it was only possible in some big computers and heavy microprocessors. But now with the advancement of the technologies, we can now do all these things in the small microcontroller boards as well. And this thing of processing everything on the device itself without relying on the external cloud computer for computational and decision making is called as edge computing. But what exactly Edge Impulse is and how it will be useful to us. Edge Impulse is a tool which will help you to make AI models in it. So what it does is we provide all the data to the Edge Impulse and later it can process all the data and give us a model, a trained model of that data, which we can later provide into our microcontrollers that can do all the prediction stuff later. So all those complex tasks like analyzing the data and preparing model out of it will be done by Edge Impulse so that we can only focus on building our projects and products and hence it become a really popular tool both in the industries and for makers like us. And the best part is it is available completely free of course for makers and hobbies like us. So that was a brief about what is Edge Impulse and slowly while we start working on it, the things will get more clear. So now let's start making our free account on Edge Impulse. So to make an account, you need to go to studio.edgeimpulse.com and here just fill out your basic details. After that, click on sign up. And with this, we are done making an account on Edge Impulse. And here, I'll click on continue to your project as we are going to build our own project from scratch. Now here, the first step is we need to provide the data and for that, we'll go to the data equation tab. And here, first we need to connect a device through which we'll be providing the data or the images we can see. So here, there are several options. Either we can use a development board like a ESP32 CAM to capture the images or we can use the webcam that is connected with the computer or the simplest method is we can scan the QR code and make a smartphone act as a webcam to upload the data or the images. So I'll choose this simplest option. So I'll take my smartphone and here I'll open the QR code scanner and I'll simply scan this QR code. Now I'll choose it for collecting images and now after giving the permission of camera, now I can access the camera of the smartphone and now I can provide the data using my smartphone itself. So here I'll take the example of two different remote. One is the IR remote and other is the RF remote. And we'll be making a simple object detection based project that will identify whether it is an RF remote or an IR remote. So here I have made this kind of setup using my tripod so that I can take multiple images of different different uh, remotes. Okay. So first I'll start with taking the image of the RF remote. So I'll uh, place it and I'll just click on the capture button. And as I click on the capture button on the desktop, you can see that I got the image of the remote, which is currently unknown because we haven't put any label to it. So similarly, we'll be taking multiple images of this object. And remember in machine learning, more the data, the more accurate your model will be. So I'll click the random pictures of this remote with different, different angles. So I have clicked over 20 images of the RF remote and similarly what I'll do is I'll remove the RF remote and place the IR remote here and I'll start capturing the images of the IR remote as well. So as I click on the capture button, I will get the IR remote data here on the on the screen and similar to the RF remote, I'll take the IR remote's data in different different angles. Remember more the data, the more accurate will be the model. Okay, so I clicked around 23 images of this IR remote. So in total, I have 43 images or 43 uh, different different data of two different devices. So I think that's uh, pretty much it for our first demo project object detection. And after getting the data, what we'll do is we'll go to the labeling queue and we need to label like which image represent which particular remote. Okay, for example, this. So as I hover my arrow onto this image, as you can see, I get a grid like structure of X and Y axis. So I'll make a rectangle using it 
and I'll give it a label. So this is an RF remote. So I'll name it as RF remote. You can give any label to it. Okay. Click on save label. And as you can see on the next image, I got the label automatically recognized by this system, by the edge impulse. And also sometimes the rectangle is not in perfect shape. So we can resize this rectangle or also move this rectangle up and down in case if you think the rectangle is not at proper position, click on save label. And similarly, I'll be doing this for all the 43 images quickly. And first, let me just complete this for RF remote and then I'll show how to rename the label for the IR remote. Okay, so now I'm done with all the images of the RF remote and for the IR remote, what we can do is we can delete this label and we can create a new rectangle and give a new label to it. So this is an IR remote. So I'll set the label for it. And similarly, I'll save this and the new image will come up and I'll set all the same labels for the rest of the IR remotes quickly. And with this, I'm done with labeling all the images. And now the next step is we need to create the impulse. So we'll click on create impulse. So here, as you can see, the image width and height is written as 48 by 48. Now in your case, it may be different like 96 by 96, but here we need to put it as 48 by 48 as it is a recommended size of image for the microcontroller boards like ESP32 cam. And it's recommended because the smaller the size is, it will be more easy for the controllers to process that data. After that, we'll click on add processing block and here we'll be adding this image block. After that, we'll be adding the learning block and here we'll be using the object detection learning block, uh, the first option. I'll click on add button. And now, as you can see, the output feature already recognizes the two different labels, the IR remote and RF remote. I'll just click on save impulse. After saving the impulse, we'll go to the image option. And here in the parameters, we will change the color depth to grayscale. Now, again, we are doing this step to make the processing time as low as possible for our microcontrollers, because obviously processing RGB will take more time, more processing power than uh, processing the grayscale images. I'll click on save parameter. And after that, let's just click on generate feature. Now, this will definitely take some time. So I'll skip this part of video. And we are done with this step. And as you can see, we got a graph with two different kinds of dot. One is for the RF remote and other is for the IR remote. Now the data, uh, both the data are quite separated from each other, which is a good sign. But I don't know why only one single data point is in, in the range of IR remote, but I think it should be okay for our demo project. And after doing this step, now we are good to go to the object detection part. And here we have to provide a couple of parameters to generate the model or train the model and generate the uh, ML file for us. Okay. So first of all, the training cycles now for the Arduino or for the ESP32 CAM board, the recommended training cycles is of 30 and the learning rate is 0.005. Okay. You can try changing this number and experiment with it, but this is the recommended number. Now scrolling down here, we get an option to choose the model. So I'll click here and there are several different kinds of models available here for ML, but the recommended one is this FOMO, which is faster objects, more objects. And I'll click on the add button. And after doing all these changes, you can just click on the start training button. It will start training the data and it will also take a couple of times. So I'll skip this part of video as well. And we are done with the model training and below that we got the results. And as you can see, our data is completely perfect. As you can see, we got the 100% accuracy for the IR remote. We got 100% accuracy for the RF remote as well. And as you can see, the score is 100%, a perfect model. And after this step, we are good to go to the deployment section where we will get the file for our Arduino IDs. For that, we'll go to the deployment option. And here we can search for different kind of deployment option. For our case, we'll be using the Arduino library. And after that, just click on the build button. And as you can see, it automatically generated a library file that is supported by Arduino IDE, which is downloaded automatically. And with this, we are done with the edge impulse part. And now we just need to install the library and test out the example code provided. But before that, you need to connect the ESP32 CAM board with your computer. Now, as the ESP32 CAM doesn't come with the built-in programmer, you need to have a USB TTL programmer, or you can have this universal TTL programmer grammar which is available on our website with you and just connect it with your computer after that i'll open up arduino id and i'll go to sketch into include library into add zip library now here i'll go to the folder where i just downloaded that zip file which is here and click on the choose button okay so library successfully installed and now i can go to files into examples and here i'll scroll down to that library which is by the name tech esms project and here i'll go to esp32 and esp32 camera 
and here is the complete code and this is the bestest part of edge impulse we not only get the trained model but we also get the fully written arduino compatible sketch which you just need to upload it directly to your board it is ready to use the only change that you need to do is you need to select the model that you are using so we have two model option one is for the espi and other is for the ai thinker which is the esp32 cam so i'll just comment out the espi board and just uncomment the uh, ai thinker esp32 cam board and now we are good to go to upload it so i'll select the right board which is ai thinker esp32 cam and after that i'll select the right com port which is this and let's just straight away hit the upload button okay so it's done uploading let's open the serial monitor and right now it says no object found i'll bring the rf remote in the table and uh, okay as you can see it shows the rf remote with an accuracy of 0 0.7 0 0.6 0.8 percent yeah okay 0.9 as well so as you can see it, it is recognizing the rf remote and if i bring the ir remote closer with the rf remote as well let's see okay so now it is detecting both rf and ir as well and if I remove the RF and just display the IR, okay, it is recognizing the IR, rem IR remote quite accurately. Okay, so it is able to recognize both the objects and we are also able to see the accuracy level as well. Now, right now, I have provided a data set of just 20 or 22 images, which is not that enough. I think we should provide at least 50 or 100 images of one product to train our model with much more accuracy. Now later when I added more number of data like 44, 144 items in total so somewhere around 70 images of both the remotes I was getting much better accuracy let me show you the results so right now the camera is pointing towards the RF remote and on the screen you can say RF remote is getting uh, detected with the accuracy of almost 0 0.8, 0 0.7 and 0.9 sometimes so this is the RF remote and I bring the IR remote under the camera as you can see I'm getting the IR remote detected with accuracy of 0 0.9, 0 0.8 so IR remote is detected quite accurately as compared to RF remote it's just because of the contrast so as you can see the IR remote has the black border at the edge so it get a uh, great contrast while the RF remote is having the white edges and the background also white so it is not able to uh, recognize with that accuracy as compared to the IR remote but yeah with more number of data we are getting better accuracy hence proved so this was the first episode and my first demo project of machine learning using edge impulse share your thoughts about this and in case if you try out this project well share your experience about this project down in the comment section of this video and also the ESP32 cam board and the programmer board are available on our website so you can purchase it whose link is down in the description and do support us and yeah that being said and I am just ending this video here and now just wait for the upcoming episode of the series and then explore learn share with me techie sms <laughs>